this is Herbal M, and welcome to part one of the peppermint plant study. Due to the extensiveness of this plant study, I will be separating this into two parts for your convenience. Now, peppermint has been used medicinally for thousands of years. The ancient Egyptians, one of the most med medically advanced ancient peoples, cultivated and used peppermint leaves for indigestion and heartburn. Also, the ancient Romans and Greeks took peppermint to soothe their stomachs, and the plant was used by the Europeans, especially in Western Europe, and gained popularity in the 1700s for stomach ailments and menstrual disorders. Now, I found a stamp that was issued by Poland that featured peppermint, and I included a photo because I thought it was just too neat to pass up. Now, the characteristics of peppermint, they are perennial, found in Europe, Asia, and North America. Now, there are 25 different species of peppermint produced by these areas, and but the U.S. produces the majority. The plant is roughly one to one and a half feet high, with spearhead-shaped leaves and stems varying in color from green to burgundy. Now, the medicinal uses for this herb are extremely extensive, thus why I am separating this into two parts. Now, the medicinal uses, starting out, it is good for aromatherapy, bronchitis, it is also good for the cardiovascular system, it is good for colds, congestion, fatigue, flus, gastritis and ulcers, headaches and migraines, irritable bowel syndrome, lice, nausea, nerve and back pain. It also relieves muscle pain and sinus disturbances. Now, there is a very long list of properties to this herb that I will now sound off, so please bear with me. Adaptogens, to regulate the systems of the body. It is an analgesic and an anodyne, meaning it relieves pain. It is anti-carcinogenic, which means that it fights cancer. It is antifungal, an antioxidant. It is antispasmodic, aromatic, and astringent. Astringent means to contract the tissues and canals of the body, thereby diminishing discharges of, as of mucus or blood. It is a cardiac tonic cordial, meaning that it stimulates the cardiac system. It is also carminative, meaning that if you have one of those horrible gas bubbles that just won't seem to pop, it will help you expel that gas. It is cephalic, meaning that it is directed towards the head. It is a cholagogue, meaning that it will promote the flow of bile. It is a diaphoretic or pseudophoric, meaning causing you to sweat. It is a amenagogue, which means it promotes the menstrual discharge, and it is also expectorant, meaning that it will help you cough up any mucus that you have stored away. It is a febrifuge, meaning to dispel or reduce a fever. It is a hepatic, meaning that it helps the liver. It is insect repellent and nervine. Nervine meaning to soothe the nerves. It is also refrigerant, meaning that it feels cold when you put it on your skin. It is also a skin tonic. It is also a stimulant and a vasoconstrictor, meaning it causes a narrowing of the walls of the blood vessels. It, it, all, it is also a vermifuge, meaning to ex, helping you to expel worms or other animal parasites from the intestines. That is all of the properties of this. Now, on to the uses. The parts of this herb used is pretty much everything from the top leaf to the root, but I mainly use the leaves. Now, peppermint has a nice taste and is commonly used in cooking and drinks. It contains vitamins A and C and a number of minerals, and it has a large variety of medicinal uses, some of which have been scientifically proven. Now, that is it for part one, and I will see you again at part two.